Hey everybody, um, Miss Lerner here. I am going to go over the answers to the chapter nine and 10 review activities. Hopefully you've been reviewing um, the information before actually doing these at the end to kind of assess areas you might need to return to um, in terms of the AP exam. Um, it seems to me just looking at attendance, people are still kind of confused about the difference between um, some relatively basic concepts like the difference between pre-operational versus concrete operational stages of development. So um, if I commented on your response, maybe you would like to go back to one of your graphic organizers and look at that. All right, so the first portion is called setting the stage and it has a scenario. And then I um, put down all the developmental theorists, Erickson, Piaget and Kohlberg um, coming from unit nine and Freud coming from personality in unit 10. Um, now it says two-year-old Jeremy has a younger sister. When asked if he has a sister, he answers yes. When asked if his sister has a brother, Jeremy answers no. He will only share his toys so that his parents do not yell at him. Okay, so um, I tried to embed a little bit of each one of these stages um, together um, so that you could see some developmental features here. I couldn't cover necessarily all of them, but um, regardless. So um, Freud, remember, was only adults play love games, okay? Um, and a two-year-old is going to be in the anal stage of development, okay? Remember, with anal stage of development, um, there's the potty training going on, okay? And um, you're either going to wind up anal retentive, um, and be kind of cold and rigid and organized and um, overly neurotic or anal expulsive, which is kind of like you were really disorganized, chaotic, and had a messy life. All right. Um, Eric Erickson. Okay. So remember, the first state of development for Eric Erickson is trust versus mistrust. But that really only lasts until the age of one. Okay, um, just like the oral stage for Freud. Um, so really what we're talking about here during potty training is do you have a control do you have a sense of control over your environment and your body and can you start to establish your own independence, have autonomy? Okay, or, or are you going to have shame and doubt the rest of your life? Okay. Piaget. Okay. At two, you're no longer in the sensory motor stage of development, okay? Santa, please come over for Oreos. You are going to be in the pre-operational stage of development. And I asked to list any terminology that is indicative of features of that, sta of that stage. And what I was looking for was irreversibility here, okay? Meaning... You know, the example I had given in class was something to the effect of like dumping your crayon box out and not being able to figure out that you can stuff the crayons back in. But that's only one type of irreversibility. If I can't reverse mental operations, then I would be pre-operational. That I know that I have a sister, but I can't understand that my sister would, in Jeremy's case, have a brother. Okay. And then Kohlberg, this is talking about pre-conventional morality. Remember, there were going to be three broad levels, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional, and then there were going to be two stages within each one, okay? Um, he's pretty much at the first stage, which is going to be avoiding punishment, right? He will only share his toys so that his parents do not yell at him, right? Great. Okay, let's go move on to Buddy. Ten-year-old Buddy wants to be just like his dad and will do anything to gain his approval. Buddy's been working in the garage with him on his building projects with his own tool belt. When his father pours out two gallons of paint in different sized containers, Buddy understands that each container has the same amount. Okay, so obviously I was trying to show the conservation task here in a more creative fashion um, than glasses of water, but... Um, here we go. So 10, when you're 10 years old, generally speaking, um, according to Freud, 
you are going to be pushing down any t- t- type of sexual feelings you have. And we call that latency. Remember that word latent means hidden. Okay. So you have burgeoning desires. They get placed and buried back down. Okay. Um, and additionally, latency is going to be the stage after the phallic stage of development. Only adults play love games. Okay. Where you say to your parent, remember when I, you know, wanted to, to kill your opposite sex parent? Remember when I, we had such hard feelings toward one another, or remember when I wanted to kill you? Now I want to be just like you. And that was called identification. Okay. So that was the term there. 10 year old buddy wants to be just like his dad. Okay. Yeah. Well, he identifies with him. And Freud said that this is the basis of gender identity. Okay. Obviously very controversial theories, but Regardless, this is what he said. Okay, Eric Erickson. Um, it sounds to me like Buddy is working on building projects. Okay, so he's not starting a project, which would be initiative versus guilt. Instead, he is doing, setting his mind to achieving a goal. Okay, being hardworking and having this project on industry versus inferiority. Okay. Now, it says when his father pours out two gallons of paint in different size containers, Buddy understands that each container has the same amount. That would mean that he was in concrete operations, con con, because he's mastered conservation. The conservation task, this ability to reverse operations means that you have a logic okay and this is a big developmental milestone and then lastly Kohlberg we're looking at conventional morality okay notice that he will do anything to gain his approval we sometimes call that golden boy or golden child I'm making moral decisions based upon um, uh, getting other people to like me, okay, which is really the first level of conventional, um, the first stage in that level of conventional, and then it pushes on to always following the law, law and order, okay. And number three, seventeen-year-old Judy has been looking at the world at a deeper level than ever before. She's beginning to question the adults that she has always admired, as well as the necessity of certain laws, thinking that rules should be, be sometimes be broken for the good of, ma- of the majority. Okay, so um, for this, it's going to be the last stage of Freudian development, which is mature sexual relationships, the genital stage. Okay, we know that adolescence, you should all know that from a psychosocial standpoint, in adolescence, you are moving through identity versus role confusion. If I'm thinking about the world at a deeper level, than ever before, right? Um, that's going to be formal operations and abstract thought. And then for Kohlberg, um, for for moral development, beginning to question the necessity of certain laws, thinking that rules should sometimes be broken for the good of the majority. That's post-conventional, really the fifth stage of Kohlberg, meaning, oops, um, meaning that it's about your social contract, what's good, what's better for the majority rather than yourself, we call it, before we have our own refined universal ethical principles, which is the last stage, which according to Kohlberg, not many people got to. Okay, moving on. Let me back this up a little bit so that, okay, good stuff. Okay, Phil has anxiety because he has very strong anger toward his parents. He knows this isn't right, so he decides to work hard to do all his chores and homework. According to the psychodynamic approach, Phil is engaging in what defense mechanism? Okay, so a lot of people wrote reaction information. Reaction information is when you act in the exaggerated opposite of how you truly feel. Okay, Um, if it said something to the effect of... um, he is very kind, overly sweet and kind to his parents, that would be reaction formation, even though he was angry. Okay, What we were looking for here is sublimation. Sublimation, a healthy sort of outlet 
for your anger, your sexual desires, your negative emotions. Projection um, would be if Phil said, I don't understand why my parents are so angry at me. Like you see your own things you're unwilling to accept about yourself and other people. Um, transference is a term that we didn't get to go over. It deals with um, psychoanalytical, psychoanalytic therapy. And then denial would be that he's, I don't know. What are you talking about? I'm not angry at my parents. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. A child has a dog and refers to this dog as doggy. She then sees a kitten for the first time and calls out doggy. This process is called. Okay. So if I take something that is brand new and I fit it into my existing schemas, that is known as assimilation. Okay. Assimilation. Very, very important. The second that the child knows that the kitten is a kitten and not a dog. That is accommodation. The C for ch ch changes. Accommodation is either changing your schemas um, and creating new ones in terms of psychology, or it's from unit four, changing the curvature of your lens to refocus light on your retina. Both changing, not just plugging things in. All right. Um, a proponent of learning theory might be Freud, Jung, Rogers, Maslow, or Skinner. Well, let's see. Freud and Jung are psychodynamic. Rogers and Maslow are humanistic. So, yep, leave Skinner to be behavior, uh, behaviorist type of personality approach. All right. Which of the following is not a Jungian archetype? Persona, shadow, anima, animus, or superego? The answer here is superego. That is Freudian. It is not going to be an archetype. Um, the persona was the mask that you wore. Your shadow was what you were most afraid of becoming. Anima, in theory, was the more feminine side of your of a man. Animus was the more masculine side of a woman. And they, the more healthier people, Young said, had a balance between the anima and animus. Okay, uh, sorry, there's typos. Someone who has an external locus of control is likely to have a positive self-concept, a high sense of self-efficacy, a strong libido, <laughs> a belief in luck, or a high IQ. An external locus of control is quite literally a strong belief in luck um, or that other people, fate, coincidence controls your life and not yourself. Which approach to personality is the least deterministic? Okay, so um, I've thrown this word around in class a lot. Okay, I think it's important to understand. Deterministic means that it's set, that you, you're incapable of changing it yourself. So we know that the least deterministic would be humanistic because humanists say, it's not you, man. It's the world, man. And you could be anything you want to be. All right. Harlow's experiments with substitute mothers made out of wire demonstrated the importance of what aspect of nurturing? Feeding, responsiveness to needs, imprinting, touch, or stranger anxiety. The answer here is touch or contact comfort. Remember, those monkeys with the terry cloth mother would sit on that terry cloth mother 18 to 20 hours a day, only getting off to the wire mother that fed them when they were brutally hungry. According to research, the most advantageous parenting style for children's development is see, authoritarian because children learn boundaries quickly and appreciate consistency, permissive because young children need to explore the environment more, more than they need guidelines for behavior, authoritarian because it combines the elements of the permissive parenting style, securely attached because children are confident parents will meet their needs, or authoritative because children have boundaries that are reasonable and justified. The answer here, yes, authoritative. Authoritative parents give. Authoritarian parents are totalitarian, like dictators. Be careful. Securely attached is an, is an attachment style. It's not a parenting style. Parenting style comes from the parent. Attachment style comes from the child. Remember, attachment styles, um, we're going to be either securely attached or insecurely attached. And within that insecurely attached, you could be um, avoidant. Um, or you could be anxious, okay? Um, but authoritative is the best parenting style. What would Piaget test in order to determine whether a child is in the pre-operational or concrete operational stage of cognitive development? Concept of conservation, okay? Let's go through the rest because I keep 
repeating this over and over again, but um, object permanence, you start to develop object permanence during the sensory motor stage, right? So like around 10 months. Attachment, that's not really cognitive development, that's emotional te uh, um, development. Hypothesis testing, that would be ab abstract. Universal ethical principles, that's morality. So once you pass the conservation task, you've overcome centration and irreversibility, so you are now in concrete operations. Which of the following newborn reflexes help infants find and eat food? Babinski, Moro, attachment, conservation, or rooting. Babinski was that cutely named re reflex that if you touch the bottom of a baby's foot, that the, the, the toes fan out. Moro was the startle reflex. Ah! Okay. Um, attachment, um, not really a reflex. Conservation, not a reflex. Rooting, the, when, you, when you stroke a baby's cheek, they will turn in the direction of the food. Okay, what kinds of factors are ignored or de-emphasized when people commit the fundamental attribution error? So attribution, we're looking for the cause of someone's behavior, okay? The fundamental attribution um, error is gonna deal with the attributions of, of other people's behavior. So we, well, we make these unconscious sorts of thoughts about people without even realizing it, saying, oh, they're acting this way because of the situation or they're acting this way because of the type of person they are. Um, and when we're looking at other people, we tend to blame their behavior on their disposition, okay, that they are this way rather than the situation. I've always given the example of someone cutting you off and you're not, you, you, don't, you don't scream out your window, hey, I know you're probably in a rush, okay? So what kinds of factors are ignored or de-emphasized when people commit the fundamental attribution error? It's going to be um, situational, okay? We don't really look at the situation here. Okay, Albert Bandura and the Social Cognitive Personality Theorists, wow, that sounds like a really great name for a band, um, <laughs> believe that personality results from the interaction of which factors, genetics, the unconscious and social, id, ego, superego, rewards, punishments, reinforcements, traits, the environment and behavior, humanism, behaviorism, and cognition. Well, this traits, the environment and behavior had a specific name, um, which was, which is a really good concept to put on, let's say like an FRQ. And it was called reciprocal determinism, that your traits are going to influence the environment that you um, go to and going to influence your behavior and your thoughts about yourself and so forth in a vicious cycle. What kind of personality theorists would be most interested in the Minnesota multifacet personality inventory? Um, which is the most widely used personality assessment, which is frequently used for clinical psychology as well. Um, psychoanalytic, humanistic, behaviorist, biological, or trait? The answer being trait. Trait theorists are most interested in personality inventories. Okay. Er Erickson's... Um, Initiative versus guilt stage is most cl closely related to Freud's oral stage, anal stage, phallic stage, latency period, or general stage. Okay, if you're lining it up, this is going to be the phallic stage. Okay, the, 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 the initiation or starting of sexual desires. Okay. Um, Carol Gilligan believed that moral decision making is dependent primarily on which of the following age, culture, religion, gender, or nationality. Okay, very important. As many questions on an AP exam come from Gilligan as Kohlberg. So she was an outspoken critic of Lawrence Kohlberg because he only tested, um, you know, um, white upper class males in this um, from Chicago um, in terms of his moral theory. Um, and he, she said that because of the type of people that women are, they participate in a culture of care, they're going to prioritize helping other people over this kind of more individualistic um, vision of w why you should make a, a moral decision. So because of that, the answer would be gender. Okay. Now, um, Lawrence Kohlberg is also criticized in a um, in a cultural way, because again, if you're in a collectivist society, it's kind of like the same thing with a women. Collectivists like to help each other, and therefore it doesn't really hold water, his theory, in collectivist societies or with women. Okay, which of the following best defines maturation? You see the word maturation, I want you to think biology. 
okay? Nothing else. It's an automatic biological development of the body and nervous system naturally unfolding over time, okay? Pre-programmed within a window. I mean, some people mature quicker or are a little bit behind, but it. I can be reasonably certain that a child is going to walk between, let's say, nine months and 18 months, okay? I don't have to teach them necessarily to do that. It's just an automatic biological unfolding, okay? Okay, here we go. Um, according to Freud, in what stage of psychosexual development does the Oedipus complex take place? Well, we had just talked about this, um, this the the beginning of sexual feelings. It must be phallic, okay? Uh, obviously, I'm going to have desires for my opposite sex parent, according to Freud, because I have first um, started to have sexual feelings um, at all. All right, and then we have Carl Rogers. Gotta love Carl Rogers, humanist. So cute. Um, a client's personality is determined by measuring the difference between introversion and extroversion, ideal self and real self, self-efficacy and self-esteem, persona and shadow, self-actualization and esteem needs. The answer here you should know immediately is ideal versus real self. We did this in class. We had that um, we had that exercise with the chart where we calculated where we were at versus what we saw as our ideal self. So, um, and the lower the number, the more in theory, what the closer you are to what we call a fully functioning person, right? That's Carl Rogers is ver version of self-actualization. Okay. Cause self-actualization for according to Maslow was reserved for very, very elite beings like MLK and Gandhi and Mother Teresa and Eleanor Roosevelt. So Carl Rogers said, we really can all be maybe not self-actualized. We have these self-actualizing personalities in the form of a fully functioning person. Um, and then Alfred Adler, okay, who was a psychodynamic theorist that dealt with birth order um, and um, social relationships. He proposed that humans are motivated by feelings of inferiority, neurotic needs, empathic understanding, sexual urges, or intrinsic motivation. Yes, he came up with the inferiority complex, specifically that middle child sort of issue. Neurotic needs was Karen Horney. Empathic understanding would be um, Carl Rogers. Sexual urges, Freud. Intrinsic motivation, um, probably Bendor or another social learning theorist. All right, so Hopefully, my explanations make more sense if you were struggling on any of these. Um, if you're still having problems, you know, reach out. I'm here for you. Um, you know, I'm, I am trying to get people to join um, Google Meets, which I would like to talk about some of these questions and concerns and review some of the more confusing topics um, in preparation for the exam. Um, I hope that everybody gets a little bit of fresh air today. It's a beautiful day outside. Um, and I'm thinking about all of you. Um, have a great, great rest of your day.